Deku has unlocked his first new quirk since getting one for all in My Hero Academia Season 5, a quirk called Black Whip, which comes from the fifth user that allows him to manifest and control dark energy from his body that can take on different properties like stretchy or sticky, sort of like a combination of Hisoka's bungee gum and Spider-Man's webs. If you've watched my How Many Chapters Will Season 6 cover video, which you can find right above in the top right, then you know that I believe Season 6 is going to cover more than just the war arc. So let's discuss how many quirks Deku will awaken this season and what they are. Spoilers for My Hero Academia Season 6 ahead, you've been warned, hit it! So ever since the revelation that Deku would be unlocking new quirks since the events of the joint training arc last season, we've seen Deku train the Black Whip quirk during the Endeavor training portion of the story and figuring out more or less how it works just by using it repeatedly. The good thing about when Deku unlocked Black Whip is that he had plenty of time to train the quirk. There wasn't an immediate need for him to go out and use it in the field. And even when he did, he had Endeavor's guidance at the time to do that. In this season of My Hero Academia, however, we are faced with an insurmountable task given to the heroes. They have to not only surprise the villains, but take on the entire Meta Liberation Army in an effort to arrest every single member and take them all down in one fell swoop. Now, during this battle and during this section of the story, Deku unlocks multiple quirks. So starting our discussion on those, we have the first quirk that he unlocks in Season 6, which is going to be the seventh user, Nana's quirk, Float. Now, I believe in Season 5, we already did get the scene where Deku and Bakugo and All Might sat down to discuss the other quirks inside of One for All. And at that time, it was told to us, somehow All Might knew, that the next quirk that was going to unlock would be the seventh user. I'm not sure if I really remember entirely how All Might specifically knew which specific quirk was going to be the next to unlock, but he was right. And I know I've said so far that all these new quirks Deku was getting, he didn't really have a chance to train because they were all unlocked sort of in the heat of the moment. But Float is sort of the one that breaks this rule because before the war, Deku does do some secret training with various members of Class 1A. And part of that was doing training with Suyu and Sero to try to get better with his Black Whip hitting quick targets. And also trying to capture Bakugo as Bakugo tries to evade him using Black Whip. Those are very, very good training for how Black Black Whip is used and making it make sense when Deku is suddenly a Black Whip expert a little later on in the season. However, with Ochako, All Might had Deku do some training where Ochako would make Deku weightless and he would train doing different midair movements. And the theory was by All Might that this training would allow Deku's body to sort of prepare itself for Nana's quirk coming out or Nana's quirk flow appearing. And it seems like that is the case because during the war arc, the first new quirk that Deku does awaken seems to be Float. And Float is a very, very easy quirk to understand when you break it down. Yes, it's easy to say it's just the ability to fly, but more so it's the ability to move your body in any direction. And that's the big benefit of this quirk that I think makes it very, very worth having because a lot of people were like, well, Deku can already fly more or less by using Air Force. Even All Might could more or less fly. And we've seen him do that various times, like in the My Hero Academia movie. We've seen him do it when he had to fly all the way to All for One's location in Kamino. They do have a mode of transportation where they can just punch the air behind them, kick the air behind them, cause enough force to send their body flying, right? That is one mode of flying that we even see Deku do against Overhaul in the Overhaul arc in the anime. So a lot of people look at the float quirk and they go, all right, well, what's really the use of that? Now he can get higher in the air without using so much strength. I mean, that's one thing. But I mean, once you're in the air, how much difference does it make if he has this float quirk and he can fly now when he could practically fly before. And the difference is this allows Deku to move his body in any direction he wills, right? So that's 100% omnidirectional movement. But let's say I'm floating in the air and there's someone standing in front of me, or I guess floating in the air in front of me, and they go to hit me with a punch. I can decide to just move my body backwards or I can decide to move my body around them or to the side, and I don't have to move my hands or my legs or anything at all. I am just moving like there is an invisible person with a giant hand 
holding my body and moving me around in any direction that I want to. And that adds an extreme level of mobility to Deku's kit, especially when paired with the fact that he can mix that with Air Force, right? And he can do really, really interesting movements in the air as we've seen him do later on in the Dark Deku arc, where he was just dodging stuff and weaving his way through attacks in a really, really interesting way. This quirk float and the next quirk that we're gonna talk about are part of what make Deku very difficult to hit after a certain portion in the story because he just has this insane, fluid, perfect movement that just makes him very, very dangerous. The second quirk that Deku is going to unlock in My Hero Academia Season 6 is going to be a quirk called Danger Sense, which comes from the fourth user. Now, Danger Sense is another sort of simple to understand quirk because it's easy enough to just compare to another power that almost everybody I'm sure knows, which is Spider Sense. Yes, Danger Sense is in some ways very, very similar to Spider Sense. It warns Deku about incoming danger, but not literally every form of incoming danger. And we've seen this multiple times, like there's a section where Toga attacks Deku, but I don't think she necessarily has killing intent in her attacks, and it's really messing with Deku's Danger Sense. It's not really going off, right? But there are other instances where and this is where I think it's different from Spider-Sense, there's other instances where a large crowd will just have negative feelings towards Deku, right? Like they don't want him around, like they're angry at him and the heroes, and they, they feel like he's gonna put them in danger. And I don't think that crowd was about to mob Deku, I think they know how that would've went. I don't think that crowd was about to mob the heroes and like carry them away or injure them or do anything. It was just such intense negative feelings towards Deku that his danger sense started going crazy. It started going absolutely haywire. So danger sense is an ability that warns you of incoming danger, but also can let you know about bad intentions or kind of negative emotions heading your way or heading in the vicinity of your direction. And it works well enough and gives Deku enough of a warning that if an opponent is trying to hit Deku with an attack, he gets the danger sense and then he's able to react to it and dodge it, right? And we've even seen the original user of the quirk inside of the Vestige world, dodging various attacks from the Black Whip user. But Danger Sense actually has a pretty tricky activation. At first, we're not really sure what is going on, and if we're seeing a new quirk, especially in the manga, I'm interested to see how the anime adapts it, but we weren't really sure that Deku had unlocked a new quirk because the first Danger Sense panel kind of just came out of nowhere, right? And it didn't really make sense. It's not like Black Whip where you see a, a bunch of dark energy coming out of Deku's body or you see Deku just standing in midair where it's like, okay, obviously something different is going on here. It just seemed like an interesting symbol that Horikoshi drew in the side of a panel. But when I think about why Danger Sense activated, a lot of people like to say that it was only because Deku rage in the moment. There's something that happens in season six that makes Deku go absolutely berserk. And I believe that's the first time that we see a danger sense symbol on the panels, right? But I like to believe that in the same way that Deku's body was trained to prepare itself for float to activate by using Ochako's weightlessness and having Deku train midair movements, that danger sense started to activate as soon as Deku was put in this extremely dangerous situation, and really more so as soon as Shigaraki had awoken. Because Deku knows the moment that Shigaraki wakes up, he turns before anyone else does and looks towards the hospital up in the forest before any destruction starts to happen. He hears in his head, it's him. He's coming. And that to me is a warning of danger, which really, really seems like it's the sort of thing that would happen as Danger Sense is for the first time slowly leaking out of that core inside of One For All and beginning to activate. And it even mirrors the idea that the users tend to talk to Deku. And it also coincides with one of the first times that the Vestiges have been able to speak to Deku while he was conscious. Which we know is something that has only been possible because One For All has gotten more control over itself over the course of the series. Now again, if you watch my video on how many chapters I think season six will cover, you know that I think we're gonna go into the Deku Black arc, where Deku makes some very, very complicated decisions and goes off on his own for a while, protecting the streets of Japan as a dark masked vigilante. And in this arc, the first quirk that we see Deku awaken is another rather simple one, but this one is probably the simplest one that Deku has. The quirk that I'm talking about is the six users quirk, Smokescreen. 
And this quirk allows Deku to release smoke from his body. It's really that simple and that easy. Now, I think it would be a little broken if he could turn into smoke like Smoker from One Piece, which fun bit of trivia was the character that Horikoshi drew fan art for when he was just a fan of One Piece and not quite a mangaka yet that was sent into Oda and Oda later showed off, showing where he likely got the idea from to give Deku a smoke quirk in the first place. But there really isn't that much to say about this quirk. It really is as cut and dry as it sounds. I don't think that Deku has any specific control over the smoke itself. Like he can't shape it in the stuff or move it around in any specific way, but he can create smoke out of his hands, right? In a specific direction and keep someone hidden or create a giant city block wide smoke screen, multiple city blocks in fact, that he can use to think or dodge enemy projectiles. So it is a very useful quirk in the way that it is used in the story. It's not the craziest or most useful quirk in the galaxy. Deku uses it various times in what I hope is gonna be in season six by covering himself when he's being a vigilante so that he's not literally seen by all the people that he's going against. So it's not easy to tell who that is, right? Which hero that is and who is breaking the law by going out to do all of these various things like fighting villains and using his quirk with Japan in the state that it was during that arc. And the final quirk that Deku is likely to unlock in My Hero Academia Season 6 is going to be the third user's quirk, Fajin. Now it's going to be very interesting to see if the name has changed at all in the sub, right? Sometimes they like to localize names, but right now the quirk is named Fajin, which is based on a Chinese principle on using enough repetitive movements to generate energy that could then be translated into a bigger force. And that's very much what this quirk allows Deku to do. Fajin allows Deku to use his body as a source of energy by generating energy based off of his momentum and his movements. Meaning that while Deku is fighting or while Deku is using Black Whip to swing around buildings, he's building up energy that he can then use to use the Fajin quirk, which then acts like a multiplier on top of his ability. Now this quirk is like a very, very interesting kind of variant of One For All in many ways, because it stores energy in the user's body, very much like how One For All does. But One For All keeps that energy there and keeps stacking it for the next user to take advantage of, and then does that with various different users, whereas Fajin keeps that energy and allows Deku to use it immediately. And because it's a One For All quirk, it has the benefit of being boosted by One For All and being in there so long because it's a third user's quirk that it actually significantly buffs Deku anytime that he uses it, being very much like a sort of Kaioken ability that he can turn on under very, very specific conditions. It's not something that he can just activate willy-nilly. Like right now in the story, Deku is flying over an ocean and I'm sure he would really love to activate Fajin to make that go faster, but he can't because his body is just doing one motion, right? He's just flying forward. He's not really doing anything that would generate enough momentum or energy for him to then turn on the Fajin quirk to speed himself up. But we've seen Deku get a massive, massive speed boost from using this quirk, and it's also implied that anything that he hits or any damage that he does would also be boosted. So this is a very, very dangerous quirk to look out for, and it's used in a fight that Deku has against a very, very interesting sniper character where he has to start taking advantage of his max possible speed to get the victory. And those four quirks, folks, Float, Danger Sense, Smokescreen, and Fajin are the four quirks that I believe we're gonna see Deku unlock in My Hero Academia Season 6. So that is every new quirk Deku unlocks in My Hero Academia Season 6 explained. This is Pineapple. Let me know if you guys wanna see any more of these kind of big overarching Season 6 videos. I'm just getting the big ones like this one out of the way before the season starts because I know I'm gonna be covering it every week and you know, some of these videos get lost in the mix. So why not prepare? Let's get ready for our rollout of Season 6. I hope you guys are all ready. I'll see you later. It's Pineapple. I love you. Peace.